Good morning everyone, it's Heather and I am filming this video from our cabin on the Disney Wonder on our final sea day of the cruise. In this video, I'm going to talk about three things that I wish that Disney Cruise Line would do or change. A couple of these are pretty frequently mentioned by people and the third one is something I don't think a lot of people maybe have thought of or even feel the same way I do, but I'm going to tell you about it anyway. So, okay, there's three things that I wish that Disney Cruise Line would do, and basically these are kind of improvements, the first two. Number one, which I've talked about in all my daily vlogs on this cruise, is I really wish that Disney Cruise Line would improve the technology, the onboard technology for the guest. It's totally logical and admirable that they're going toward more technology and trying to use less paper and be environmentally conscious and all that. However, their app is not the greatest. If you saw our first day vlog, we had a whole bunch of problems and confusion with the app when we first got on board and it really kind of soured our mood on the first day of the cruise and um, I was kind of upset and it was not a good start to the cruise. I'm not even sure that the crew that was helping us in that lounge on the first day understood what guest services ended up telling us, which is that there's two versions of the app. There's a before the cruise at home version that has all your reservations and stuff where you book things ahead of time and things like that. And then there's an on the ship version. And I still am not completely clear how they got it to flip from the one to the other. It was not intuitive. It was not user friendly. Without them explaining exactly what we had to change in the settings, which was not easy to get to. It was very weird. Uh, so it's almost like you had to install it from the ship to get it to work right. But even when we, it didn't work then either, did it Ben? When we, we uninstalled it and reinstalled it from the ship and it still didn't work right. It was such a quirky combination of you had to have your airplane mode on, but then you had to be connected to the DCL on ship Wi-Fi and it was really weird. So they, they really definitely need to improve that because just comparing to Royal Caribbean where the internet and the app are excellent, it's so easy to figure out and it needs to be like that. <laughs> okay. And I, I just kind of feel like whoever's doing some of the technology stuff that the guest experiences, and this goes to like in the parks too with Disney Genie and Disney Genie Plus and all that. They've got a lot of issues with their app. They're not great, they need, they need improvement. They need to be more clear, user-friendly, robust, better organized. They're confusing, it's hard to find stuff. It's, yeah, they need some work on the app. Okay, and then along with that, the internet itself is very confusing because like I said in one of the earlier vlogs, it's actually not part of the app. You get to it through the app but it's actually taking you to a website to, to get logged on and logged off the internet. And that kind of threw me. And so you actually have to, it tells you, you know, bookmark this website. I don't know how to book something, <laughs> something on my phone, honestly. It, it's really weird how you have to get to it. I mean, once I figured it out, I'm like, okay, now this is how I get to it. But if you didn't know that, it's really hard. And that would definitely lead to people not being able to log on to the internet or not remembering to log off because it definitely takes that extra step of thought to remember, oh yeah, I gotta go back to that website now and log off this internet. You can't do it directly from the app. And I'm just gonna tell you right now, because I'm definitely not happy about it, I have spent almost $500 on internet on this four day cruise. And I still have a whole day left. And that's because of the way they do it. It's by megabytes. Make it by gigabytes. Make it gigabytes, Disney. What the heck? Megabytes Nobody's used. Are so small these days. Yeah, megabytes is not very much. I definitely found that doing the pay as you go, which is 25 cents a megabyte, is better than doing one of their packages. Because I did the biggest package, which was a thousand megabytes. The largest one was a thousand megabytes. Is a thousand megabytes a gigabyte? Yes. So why don't they just call it a gigabyte? <laughs> It went so fast. Like I used it up so quick and I went through two of those and was like, okay, I guess I can't use the internet anymore. And what was that on day two? Because yeah. that, that was $190 for the two because it was $89 each. It's way overpriced. It's way overpriced. And why isn't it by speed? It should be on the quality of it. Like I can understand if they charge different prices for, you know, it's dip. On the other cruise lines, it's, it kind of tells you if you want to do this, 
get this one. You know, if all you want to do is Just look at the internet, is no, no, no. If all you want to do is like message, like messenger, or you know something really basic, or look at the internet. Yeah, that's probably true. But if you want to stream video, or you want to upload something or download something, then you want this one. And the Disney, it doesn't explain that. It's just literally the megabytes. And nope, people, the average person doesn't know how many megabytes, and it even threw us off. Ben went on Discord for what, three minutes? It was like two minutes. Two minutes. And oh, 50 bucks. Yeah, 50 bucks. <laughs> just to look at, to see if there was a thing on Yeah, the he was just checking if, the, if something had posted on the server, and it, it was 50 bucks. So, I mean, we have no way of knowing what's going to use up more megabytes or not so that's it's a very poor system and i'm not happy about how much money i've spent on the internet it was especially confusing because i didn't know how it worked because i just know the speed of it yeah because at home we have like 200 it's based on speed 200 megabytes a second right and for whatever and i don't know how that works for how much data you use right and so and on royal caribbean it's all based on speed the speed of the internet and i think that's true on other cruise lines too so just to tell you if you absolutely need to use internet on disney cruise line the way it is right now until they fix it hopefully know that it's probably most cost effective to just use the pay as you go and then just try to be as quick as possible because i've definitely gotten a lot more out of it since I switched to the pay as you go. You can set a dollar limit. So when like first I set it at a hundred dollars and it took me a good long time to use up that hundred dollars. It was definitely slower than it was to use up the $89 thousand megabyte package. I don't, which I don't, doesn't make sense. It was easier to monitor my usage using the pay as you go than it was to just use the pre amount package. So that would be my recommendation. But otherwise, I don't advise using the internet on Disney Cruise Line if you don't absolutely have to because it's not efficient and it's very expensive. Okay, the second thing I wish that they would fix or change on Disney Cruise Line, there is something very weird about how they do gratuities on this ship. Okay, normal gratuities on a ship, it's a set amount per day per passenger. And I have it right here. It's divided up, your gratuities when you go on a cruise, and this is not every cruise, this is an American-based thing, and it shows these are the four crew members that are getting the gratuities. Our server, Booty, our assistant server, Colin, our head server, Robert, who, by the way, was terrific and did come over and talk to us quite a bit. Sometimes they don't, and you're like, why am I tipping this person? What did they do, you know? And then our stateroom host, um, Maricel. Okay, so, and it shows these are the amounts and that's going to vary by the length of your cruise. Now normally this is just charged to your room account and, in, and on most cruise lines including Disney and this is what I did, you can prepay the gratuities ahead of time. So I paid for it at home, it was a total of $116 and I have that all paid. So I technically don't have to do anything else and even on Disney even though they make you feel like you do. You don't have to do anything else. Those gratuities have been prepaid. They're going to get them. But Disney is weird. These rip apart. They're perforated. They want you to tear those apart and put them in these envelopes and personally hand them to the people. Okay, now, this is one of those introvert things. I don't like doing that. I just think it feels... What if we never meet them again? What if we never see them again? You know, where, I mean, I, where are we going to hold it? Yeah, where are we supposed to? It's weird. I mean, it's just like an extra step. Here's one for Marisol. I mean, this one I could leave in the room. And that's what I did on my last Royal Caribbean cruise. But these, you have to like literally physically hand it to them. Have you seen like a box anywhere where you could put them in? No. Royal Caribbean on Harmony of the Seas had a box near guest services where you could drop off extra cash gratuities in an envelope for your people. And I usually do give them extra money, and I'm sure I will. I brought cash specifically for that purpose to give them extra tips um, because usually their service is very, very good. And sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. It depends on the, on the person. I just think that the way Disney does it is odd and kind of awkward for people to have to be physically handing these envelopes and putting the little paper in it and stuff, and it's weird. 
So I, I wish they wouldn't do that. And as an overall thing about gratuities on cruises, I wish, and not just on cruises, but everywhere America, I wish we would just get rid of gratuities and tips. I like how um, noodles, for example, noodles and company, the restaurant, they did a big thing where they say, we pay our servers very well. You don't need to tip them. And that kind of goes to like the minimum amount, the weird $2.35 or whatever it is minimum wage that servers get at most restaurants in the United States. Raise that to an actual livable wage and then we don't need to worry about tips. You know, so I just think the whole tipping system in the United States is whack and needs to go away. And then along with that, and I don't know what this is about, but this is definitely a Disney Cruise Line thing too. I think something about their pay or even their job security maybe is related to what we fill out on these little survey cards that we're going to get tonight, like at dinner. Because last night at dinner, Booty, our server, was giving us this whole spiel and he did it to the table next to us and stuff and oh my gosh, how uncomfortable for them. Basically saying that he expects us, he said, I expect you to give me excellent for everything. And the reason they have to say that to you is because I really think if they get any lower than that, something bad happens. Like they, it, it jeopardizes their job or it jeopardizes their pay or something. And I don't like that at all. For two reasons. One, why are you putting your poor crew on such a precarious position that their like livelihood depends on how the guest fills this thing out? And secondly, it's not giving the guest the opportunity to be honest and give an honest review that Disney can look at and actually learn from and make improvements from. I mean, it's not allowing the guest to give their genuine thoughts about the service. You know, if something wasn't great, I want to be able to say it wasn't great so they know, okay, this is something we need to improve upon. But they're basically like twisting your arm saying you have to say everything is fabulous. And I just don't agree with that at all and I, I really think Disney Cruise Line needs to change that. Okay, and then the third thing that I wish Disney Cruise Line could do, which is something that I don't think I'm going to get a lot of agreement on, but if you feel the same way about it as I do, I would love to hear about it in the comments below. I love the Disney Wonder, which I'm on right now, and the Disney Magic. The Disney Magic was the first cruise ship I ever went on, and it's the reason I fell in love with cruising, and it's the reason I fell in love with Disney Cruise Line. And I love these ships, and these are not big ships. Technically, in today's cruise world, they're considered medium. So there are smaller cruise lines, but which I haven't, I need to try something even smaller, but I think I would like it. Ben and I agree, and so does Megan, that we prefer smaller cruise ships to larger cruise ships. And I'm going to make a separate video, and when that video is done, I'm going to link it up here. So watch for that. And if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, would you please take a second and subscribe and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos like that one. I just really like the size and everything about these ships. I think these ships are so beautiful. Thank you, Disney Cruise Line, for taking such good care of these ships. Even though these ships are over 20 years old, you can't tell. They're kept up just absolutely beautifully, and they're doing maintenance on them just constantly all the time, which I showed in a couple of my vlogs. But I want more ships like these. I don't even know if they still have the plans for them or whatever. They, they made these in Fincantieri Shipyard, I think in Italy, but these ships are just fantastic. I love the Disney Wonder and I love the Disney Magic and I wish they would make, in the future ships that they build, I wish they would build more just like these. This size, this style, I just love them. And as they expand their range around the world, you'll notice the ships that they send far away are these two. The magic and the wonder. The wonder's the one that goes through the Panama Canal. The wonder's the one that goes to Alaska. The wonder is the one that they're taking to Australia. The magic is the one that's gone to Europe for years and years. There's a reason that these smaller ships go all the far cool places, and I'm going to talk about that in that next video I'm going to make. I wish they would make more ships like this because I love this size of ship, and I don't 
want to go on great big huge behemoth ships and I, I'm oh the rumor that's going around the Disney Cruise Line and we'll see it by the time this video goes up we'll see if it's true or not but that they're gonna buy that abandoned Gentine dream or whatever it is the huge 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 biggest ship in the world by far that they built and then the company went out of business and so they didn't finish they didn't they're not finishing it that Disney might buy that I would oh, I hope they don't do that I don't want to go on giant massive ships so I really wish Disney Cruise Line would build more ships just like this. I would love that. So that's three things that I wish that Disney Cruise Line would improve or do. I hope that you found this video interesting. If you did find it interesting or helpful or you liked it at all, I would appreciate you giving me a thumbs up down below. Have a great day everyone and safe travels.